LearnToFly.ca and LearnToFly.tv. Hey everybody, it's Jeff McKay from LearnToFly.ca. I'm here with John Isaac. We're at the Brampton Flight Center, and John's going to introduce us to this Redbird flight simulator. It's the FMX model, the full motion one. Pretty amazing thing, eh? Oh, very amazing. It's uh, really modernized our flight simulation training. So when did you acquire this? We've had it for about uh, 10 months now, so uh, March, April, March of last year. And a student who wants to learn to fly, typically can they do some of their hours learning in the simulator? It's probably cheaper than flying in a, in a real airplane, right? That's right, yes. Uh, with an instructor, this, uh, this unit's $140 an hour versus the 210 that they'd pay in a 172, so they're saving quite a bit of money. And uh, depending on the level of training they're doing, they can do more or less hours in the, in the unit. Uh, private license um, uh, candidates can do up to three hours of their instrument training in the, the simulator, and uh, commercial another five. Instrument rating, we can count 20 of the 40 hours instrument rating in, uh, in a certified flight training device. And then I guess the same for refreshers, like an IFR refresher, they could do it in the simulator? That's correct. Uh, what we've also done is this is certified for IFR renewals, and they can do their complete IFR renewal in the simulator, flight tests, and, and, uh, and everything in, in the unit, and uh, really not have to even touch a, a, a twin-engine airplane or a single-engine airplane uh, for their renewal. That's pretty amazing. And you can configure this for different types of aircraft, right? That's what, right. What aircraft? So currently it's configured as the Piper Seminole, a okay. twin, engine, twin, right twin engine trainer aircraft. Uh, we do have uh, the modules for a Cessna 172 yep. and for a uh, Garmin 1182. How about any of your smaller LSA, your uh, sport ones? Uh, we don't have any of those currently, but I believe uh, Redbird does uh, offer those types of, they, they offer a variety of different uh, cockpit configurations. And can you take his inside, show what it's like? I sure can. Okay, come on. So John and I are going to hop inside the flight simulator now, and John's going to take us for a circuit. We're going to fly around the Brampton Flying Club without leaving the ground. Let's go in. Great. So uh, the unit, as you see, you got the, the stairs here. You can climb on in, grab your hand here. Uh, it's on a gimbal system, so it may rock a little bit, but that's all part of the motion, uh, the motion system. When we get inside, I'll sit in the left seat. That's the pilot seat. The right seat is uh, our instructor station, and, uh, and yeah, let's get in. Okay, great. That unit is our uh, instructor station, yep. so within that unit we can we can alter the uh, the weather, uh, the turbulence, winds, uh, the approaches. We can fail instruments, fail components of the uh, the unit. So the unit has a uh, has a pilot key. Um, on this key we have uh, preloaded uh, missions, is what they're called. And they vary from VFR training up to uh, instrument training. So you can see we have a series of missions here. So I'll just select the uh, the first one. There, a VFR flight out of uh, the Brampton Airport. Yep. Uh, we'll initialize that, and we'll get it ready to go. So the unit starts us up here on runway 15 at Brampton. So we will uh, get ourselves going. I'll just do a quick start up. Uh, Normally we would use the checklist, go through all of the checklist training, uh, but for today I'll just get everything up and running. This is currently set up as a Piper Seminole uh, twin engine aircraft. It is traditional uh, traditional instrument panel. Not your glass cockpit, it's more your old That's six right. pack. That's right, exactly, yeah. the old six pack. So we have the six pack here, uh, the airspeed, the attitude indicator, altimeter. Uh, turn coordinator heading indicator with an HSI, which is great yep. for instrument training, and the vertical speed indicator. Engine instruments are on this side, and then coming over to the avionics package, we have uh, a working autopilot, a 530, Garmin 530, and a Garmin 430 um, communication navigation pack. Oh, excellent. That's good. Yeah. Right. On the, uh, the right-hand side, we have ADF and transponder. Yep. So uh, everything we need to be able to do, training all the way from, uh, from ab initio multi-engine training all the way up to uh, uh, instrument rating and instrument rating renewals. Yes. Okay. So uh, I'm going to take us through a, uh, a circuit at Brampton. And, uh, it's all your typical controls you'd see in an yep. aircraft with your 
your yoke, your rudder pedals, your throttle. Exactly, rudder pedals have their brakes, uh, the tow brakes, yep. just like in an airplane. Uh, trim, uh, trim, trim wheel, wheel yep. and uh, the flaps are over on this side. Okay, so okay, ready to go. All right, seat belts on. Seat belts on. Well, yeah. we're okay for, for today. Okay. So here we go. Yeah, you really do feel that motion as we begin to move. Right. It's very realistic. It is, and uh, once we rotate, take off, you really get a sense of it. You got lots of right rudder. Yeah, a little bit of right rudder. Not too much because of the multi-engine airplane. Yeah. Really cool. So there we go into the climb. Put the gear up. Yeah, very realistic looking. It is. Even with the sound? Yep, sound works well. Um, and uh, we have the ability in flight to pause the simulator. So if yep. a student is making an error or, or having a problem, we can pause it brief uh, oh, talk to them about what's guess. going on the uh, the computer down down here is our instructor station and within this uh, this unit uh, we can really control all the aspects of the environment so whether we can set the winds we can uh, make it rain outside you can see it's raining now um, set the the intensity so heavy rain light uh, moderate intense we can set turbulence, um, then we can get more advanced and actually set cloud layers. So within here we can determine what type of cloud, is it overcast, is it, uh, is it, is it um, you know, just few clouds. And then moving on to the more uh, valuable, I'd say. Your or the, failures, your... Exactly. Uh, <coughs> and that's where these units really become uh, invaluable. Prior to jumping in a multi-engine airplane to do multi-training, one of the big steps is learning how to deal with the uh, the engine failure procedures. Yeah. Well, in here we can do an engine failure, a true engine failure procedure, and uh, and have a student ready to deal with that before they get in the physical aircraft. That really helps a lot. It does. All right, so I will unpause it. Let me make it so it's just some moderate rain, and if you want to put that back down, we will we'll fly a circuit and get a feel for the aircraft. And you can see immediately how the weather has now changed. That's right, now yeah, we're flying in rain. And what's the circuit height of Brampton? Circuit height is 17, so I'm just leveling off here at 1,700 feet. And you can feel that bang, that's very realistic. It is. It's, uh, it works well, it's subtle, it's not overly, uh, you know, I've flown a lot of hours in this aircraft and um, my biggest concern when I first, when we first got it was, am I going to actually start to feel sick in the airplane, you know, with students learning how to fly? And it, it is in that case, it is, it's like a real airplane, it's subtle and uh, accurate. And the feel on the controls, if you want from this to the airplane? The airplane, can... it's, uh, it's quite, quite good, very realistic, um, more so some, than some other simulators I've, I've flown. So if you turn it on to the downwind? That's right. And we're flying 1.5 right now, right? That's right, yeah. runway 1.5. So once I level off here in a few degrees, we should be able to see the, the runway off the left-hand side. And there it is, Yes. off the left. All right, so we'll start getting ourselves set up for coming into land. And normally you'd be doing the downward check. That's so right. We'd be using our communications. Exactly. Normally we'd be doing the full uh, the full set of checks. So our speed's below 140. We're going to get our gear down. Turn left base. In a moment, yeah. We're yep. just coming and beam the threshold here. So the visuals are quite realistic. We have the Caledon Escarpment to the north. Uh, if we went further north, we'd be able to see uh, the towns, uh, the appropriate towns. Very realistic for uh, students who are getting into this uh, training. And with the addition of integrated programs, they do allow us to use more and more uh, time in the, uh, in the simulator. And uh, that's something we're definitely going to be using as we 
Yeah, right, it would save the student quite a bit of money too. That's Once right. Once you're in the simulator rather than right. cost of gas and the airplane, and in an airplane you're waiting on the ground. That's right. And yet, you know, before you can take off, and right? The traffic. And we're even uh, we're suggesting it to people doing it for fun, uh, doing oh, yes. flight training for fun, because the, as I'm sure you may know, the average private pilot license in Canada even though 45 is the, the Transport Canada minimum, most people do it in longer than that. Yes. And uh, what we're saying to people is that if they get into this unit and they go up, we can get through all the air exercises in a unit like this. And so when they do their first or second flight, they're actually going to be at the point where they, it's really just a review at that point. And they're already and pretty comfortable with all the controls. Exactly. The and that can allow us to really get them their license, uh, we believe, closer to the 45 hour mark. Plus, I think some students might be overwhelmed at first. You might be kind of sensory right. overload in the airplane. And as we said, the is beauty of this is things go wrong. Pause it, pause it you talk. talk about it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, what a, what a great way to train. Yeah, it's uh, quite amazing the uh, the advances. I see we're turning final now. We can we see we're running run final. Ahead. That's right. And we get our flaps all the way down. Altitude's about 1,300 feet. That's right. What's ground level of Brampton here? 935 feet. So I guess you're going to be around 500 feet above ground level as you're turning final. That's right, ground. yeah. So we were yeah, we were just uh, around 14 when we turned final there, which is where we aim to be. We can tell there's a bit of a crosswind as well, it looks like. Yeah, a little bit of a crosswind. I'm just correcting for that. So we'll uh, 75 of the numbers right around there yep. is good. And going into our flare. Is Stallhorn going to come on? Uh, if we get that slow, but I didn't. So. There we go. On the ground, you can see we even have the, the water reflecting on the runway. <laughs> and even the taxiways, what have you, are going to... The taxiways are we accurate to Brampton. Brampton. Yeah, for example, we're coming up on Charlie here right yep, after yep. the intersection. We've got the, uh, the Bravo, which runs parallel to the runways. It's uh, an excellent representation of the airport. That's great. Thank you so great. much, Sean. Oh, that's you're very great. welcome. So that's the Redbird Flight Simulator, and it's the FMX. The, the FMX, Max, right? that's correct. Yes. Yes. And that's available at the Brampton Flight Center in uh, Brampton or North Brampton or Calden. That's right. Thanks. Great.